What was it like being around him when he was up here shooting these amazing well, scenes? Well, it was uh, sometimes hectic because a lot of times things happened with the light and or the clouds and he wanted to get something done before the clouds change or the light change. So sometimes it was, it was quite hectic and hurrying up and, and uh, so things like that. It was usually fun. It wasn't a uh, drudgery at all. Yeah. It was uh, enjoying being here in an environment and uh, seeing what Ansel was seeing in the camera and, and just watching him do it. I think that his discipline in terms of making the shot do what he wanted rather than just accidental had a lot to do with oh, it. Oh, absolutely. When he understood the, uh, the science behind the, the photography, he, he knew exactly what he wanted to get and he knew how to get it. He knew the right combination of filters and uh, exposures and he ultimately went on and developed his own system which gave him options uh, from the instance of taking the picture to knowing what the result was going to be and how it should be printed and uh, this was a, a major step forward. Yeah. I know one piece of advice that he gave for any photographer who really wanted to master their craft mm -hmm. is they had to really learn the skills of photography and know their equipment. I, I think that's true of any profession though. If, if you really go at it haphazard, you're not going to be as, as good at it. But if you really understand the science behind it and the optics to a certain extent and, and the, the, the lighting right. ability and the capabilities, and, and again, uh, that's going to help tremendously. He was kind of a tech guy, wasn't he? He was very much a tech guy. He loved the, the technology behind these. He was a very early user of Polaroid and worked with Polaroid as a consultant his whole life once Polaroid started. Did he use Polaroids as a medium itself or mainly as a practice he, he, shot? No, he did. He And they developed a, a PN film, print negative film. Oh, okay. And you could expose these, uh, the, the film for the print or for the negative, depending on how you wanted to use it, because he got both. He got a negative and a print from that, yeah. that uh, taking the picture. And these were usually in a film pack on a, on a back on his camera. And uh, most of the time he, he did the, the ones that he did for his sort of his professional work, um, his fine artwork, he would probably be uh, exposing for the negative but he would see what he had because he had a print also. Yeah. But then he could take that negative into the dark room and make enlargements or a fine print from it. That's great. Then he did a lot of testing of new films for the Polaroid Corp Corporation over the years. Put yourself in his position. Uh, what advice do you think he would give, a, a, say, a new amateur photographer who's really trying to go to the next level? What do you think he would tell them? I, I th Today, I think he would be fascinated with what digital has to offer. And I think whether he would go into the dark room, the Adobe Photoshop, right. or something like that, I don't know. But I think he would be so fascinated with the digital that he would encourage people to use it. And the problem is some of the, uh, the cut film, the, the companies like aren't making it anymore. They're I mean, they're, they're cutting that part of it out. It's making it more difficult for people to use the traditional um, film for black and white. You think he would have embraced digital photography? I think he would have. I think he would have loved it. Yeah, I, agree. Uh, I, I don't know. It's guessing, but he liked that kind of, of thing, and this is something new and uh, something to play with yeah. and to learn about. Well, listen, it's certainly been great talking to you, well, Michael. I can't thank you a, enough for bringing us up here. It's been a pleasure, and you've come at a perfect time, and we you're have. seeing Yosemite at its best. Thank you, Mike. You're most welcome. Okay. Be sure to subscribe to our blog now to stay updated on my show, and we'll give you tips and insight to keep advancing your photography. Also, check out our guests' website for a closer look at their work. Tune in to our next episode of Advancing Your Photography for an inside look at another photographer's world. Until then, this is Mark Silber reminding you to get out and capture your own images of life.